November 14, 1970. It was a college football Saturday like so many before, and the countless ones that have since followed. The thundering herd of Marshall journeyed to the Tar Heel State to face off with the East Carolina Pirates in what would be the next to last game of the 1970 season. It was a hard fought game with the thundering herd losing a heartbreaker 17 to 14. Little did anyone know that broken hearts would flood Huntington, the tri-state and beyond just hours later. Okay, my name is uh, Red Dawson, William Alfred Dawson, and I came from Valdosta, Georgia, and that is a football town if I've ever seen one. If you wanted to have friends, you need to play football pretty good. Red Dawson was more than pretty good, earning a scholarship to Florida State where he was a captain and then played professionally. He chose the coaching field afterwards. He was Marshall's young defensive coordinator. His future was bright, just like the Thundering Herd program of head coach Rick Tolley. Dawson drove back from East Carolina that day to visit a recruit. We had the radio down low, but we heard something on there and they said, they said Marshall University, uh, and we didn't, so we kept on driving, and then it came back on and said the plane is, had crashed. We have uh, a total of 75. All 75 on board perished, including 37 football players, Dawson's coaching colleagues, other staff members, and well-known supporters. It is a moment in time that has stood still now for 50 years. I was 13 years old uh, in 1970, and uh, I remember vividly to this day where I was, what I was doing when I found out that, that the plane had crashed. I had, I had been to the Roxy Theater in Clinton in West Virginia where I grew up with some friends, and we came out of the theater, and we always went to the little place called the Smoke Shop on the corner there in Clinton and, and got hot dogs and drank root beer and played the pinball machines. And, I, I can remember like it's yesterday, and, and I was kind of a Marshall fan because uh, Shorty Moss was, was an assistant for him and Herbert Hoover. He was on the staff here at Marshall, and Rick Tolley was a good friend of my father, who then was the head football coach at Herbert Hoover High School, my father was. And so I, we, I was very familiar with Marshall, and there was a TV, and it scrolled across the bottom. There's been a plane crash at Tri-State Airport. You know, I got to know him for four months. I said goodbye on Friday, never saw him again. Never saw him again. With the group of coaches and players assembled, Marshall's football program seemed destined for success. They had the pieces. That's why I keep telling people, I mean, like Shoebridge, Bobby Harris, Jack Lepazzi, Dave Griffin, all those guys, there was pieces here. We were building something good, no question about it. And now the building had to start all over in a way no one could ever have imagined, while also saying goodbye to so many. A Marshall Memorial Remembering the 75 is presented by Yes Ford. Rick Tolley was a West Virginian, a native of Mullins, as the late Ernie Salvatore wrote, Tolly had a strong sense of command, broad shoulders, a thick neck, and a handsome, finely chiseled face. He was just 30 years old. Rick was uh, the old timey kind of coach. Do it my way or get off the team. Absolutely a great man. Good man, uh, good habits. Good personality, easy to laugh, uh, I, I liked him a lot. Very big man, an imposing figure. He was, he was the one that, I guess, you know, sealed the deal recruiting. He was in my house, uh, signing everything like that, and uh, he was 
Soft-spoken-like, but he also had a demeanor like uh, his way or the highway. Ken Jones was the host of Tolly's popular TV show that aired before Monday Night Football. Ken Jones was one of the 75. He would take me to the games. He'd go film the games for his TV show. And it was just like, I couldn't be any more excited about getting to go and just loved it. To be the son of a sportscaster was a wonderful life for a young 12-year-old boy who suddenly found himself without a father. We dropped him off at the airport on Friday night. The last thing I remember him saying was, if y'all be good for your mom, we'll get a pizza when I get home tomorrow night. So we were out at the airport waiting to uh, pick him up. And we, uh, Boz Johnson, we saw, we were watching TV and they broke in with uh, that the plane had crashed. Besides Jeff Jones and his two brothers, 60 others lost either one or both parents in the crash. I kind of just, when I was young, put it out of my mind. And you know how a lot of people say they never talked about it. But the older I got, then I met more people that had parents on the plane, then it got a lot easier to talk about. It was a second by second, minute by minute, day by day process to take in what had happened. I got scared and I walked home and I walked in and, and uh, I saw my father there watching TV and he was visibly upset and he told me what had happened and I remember how he told me, when he told me, where he told me, like it was yesterday. So that was when I really said, wow. And you know, at 13 years old, you don't really grasp a tragedy like that. I did a little bit, but as obviously I've got older and where I'm at now, I can fully understand you know, what that tragedy was all about and, and how difficult it, it was and has been. But we are human and selfish, and we must cry over their absence. As those who died were laid to rest, the future was filled with an abundance of question marks. You know, I didn't, I didn't lose a parent. I didn't lose a grandfather or something like that. You know, I lost, I lost 37 teammates, some coaches. You're wondering, are we going to play? A decision was made to play which was certainly a major step in helping somewhat ease the incredible pain. This portion of a Marshall Memorial remembering the 75 presented by Yes Ford has been sponsored by the West Virginia Lottery. The 37 football players who died in the plane crash represented communities in 11 different states. One of the local towns to lose a son was Ravenswood, who mourned the loss of sophomore center Alan Skeens. It was devastating and, and, and it's just something that uh, no coach or parent wants to go through or, or teammates to have one uh, lose its life like that. And, and uh, it, it just hit our, our city, uh, just in our team, it just broadside. Fred Taylor hoped in his heart Skeens wasn't on board. I didn't uh, really think that he was on that trip, and, but I think that was the thing that he, he dressed as a freshman on a, and got to go on a, on a way trip. But when it, uh, when it hit, we didn't really know whether he was on the plane or not. And we, when we found out, it was just, uh, it was just heartbreaking. At Ravenswood, Taylor built a football powerhouse from 1966 through 1996. He coached many great players. Alan Skeens was one of those who starred for the Red Devils. He started his, uh, his junior year, both offense and defense. In his senior year, we used him as, as a uh, defensive player, but he had uh, his, probably his big thing was he was able to center the ball, it's long snapper. Taylor was proud to see Skeens 
fulfill his dream. Alan, he, he gave it 100% and it's a walk on. He, he, uh, that's, he wasn't a scholarship to, um, type uh, player, but he, uh, like, he's, like I said, he, he earned his way to a, probably a position and, a, and a being able to go on the way again. Sadly, Alan Skeens and 36 other young men lost their lives much too soon. To resurrect Marshall football started with the hiring of a head coach. Ultimately, Jack Lingle accepted the challenge of building the program back. I watched with great interest what transpired, and they offered the job to a Penn State coach who subsequently turned it down. They offered it to a Georgia Tech coach who accepted the position, came, stayed two days, and left for personal reasons. The selling point by Lingle and his staff was a simple one be a part of laying a foundation. I used to recruit and say, you know, you, you're, we will not be going to bowl games. Your opportunity is to play immediately, but more importantly, yours is the opportunity to be a part of building the foundation that on other days will have its victories. Lingle was the focal point for the movie, We Are Marshall, starring Matthew McConaughey as Lingle and Matthew Fox as Red Dawson. When the movie premiered in 2006, Lingle said it was much needed. Jack Lingle was there in the very beginning of the program's rebirth. It certainly wasn't easy, but the young thundering herd blessed Marshall's beloved fan base and those from afar with a mountain of hope. This portion of a Marshall Memorial remembering the 75 presented by Yes Ford has been sponsored by GoMart. While Red Dawson would eventually leave coaching to become a success in the construction business, he was there for the start of the rebuild, which included the dynamic Reggie Oliver. Reggie is Reggie. And he's still Reggie. And he's making the Lord laugh now with some of his jokes and some of the things he'll tell him. Uh, he, was a, he was a great athlete. He could play basketball. The young Thundering Herd lost their first game to Moorhead State before coming home and accomplishing the unthinkable by beating Xavier. We were at the ground floor. I mean, we were gone program's gone, I mean, you know, and like that, so they decided to start over. So you gotta put the pieces together. Jack Lingle would serve four years as Marshall's head coach. Next was a four-year stint by Frank Elwood. The late Sonny Randall arrived on the scene in 1979. The former NFL All-Pro had a unique perspective of the Herd program where he was on the sidelines as an East Carolina assistant in the November 14th, 1970 showdown with the Herd. Mike Hamry had a bond with all three coaches. My career at Marshall, I was recruited by Jack Lingle, played three years for Frank Elwood, and played my last year for Sonny Randall. So I actually was with three of the coaches in the 70s, and I saw the program evolve in the 70s. Following a successful high school career at Herbert Hoover, Hamrick had a strong desire to help Marshall's comeback attempt. I thought maybe I could go to, go to Marshall and play there. My brother was also at Marshall. Uh, he had went to Ferrum Junior College for a year and then he transferred to Marshall. So my brother was there. And my dad really wanted us to play college football together and so I had some other opportunities, but why not? See if I can play and see if I can help bring the program back. His career as an athletic director brought him back home in 2009. One of his stops along the way was East Carolina. Well, I can remember when I interviewed for the athletic director's job at East Carolina, uh, which is a great place, was a great job. I spent eight good years there. Uh, with, with the people talked a lot about my being a graduate of Marshall and the love and the, the care and, and the concern they had for Marshall 
after the plane crash. And uh, it was a common conversation the whole year, eight years I was at East Carolina. People wanted to talk about Marshall and, and many of them remembered where they were that night. It was actually homecoming at East Carolina. As Hamrick looks back to his playing days, he knows that Lingle, Elwood, and Randall laid significant blocks. The wins didn't come, but you could see that the program was going to come back. When, you know, I didn't know when I left here in 1980, but it, it wasn't long after that that the program came back. It's a great, great honor for me uh, to be here tonight. Stan Perrys took over the program and in his first season of 1984, guided Marshall to a winning record, its first in 20 years. And in 1985, the Thundering Herd did it again. This portion of a Marshall Memorial remembering the 75 presented by Yes Ford has been sponsored by Mountain Health Network. The success of Marshall football would continue under the watchful eyes of the late George Chomp, who came on the scene in 1986. By 1987, the former Woody Hayes assistant had Marshall playing for the 1AA National Championship in Pocatello, Idaho. 87, they go to 1AA, I'm out there and you're going, I remember asking Timmy Stevens, he was with us. I said, Timmy, you think this is a one-shot wonder or the real deal? Well, obviously it was a real deal. I mean, you've seen what's happened since 87. Marshall lost a narrow decision to Northeast Louisiana, but the program was truly on the map. Chomp left for Navy following the 89 season. In year two of the Jim Don era, the Thundering Herd opened a shiny new stadium and made it to the title game once again, losing a close call to Youngstown State in Statesboro, Georgia. The following year, things would finally go Marshall's way. Really The Bob Pruitt days started in 1996 by capturing a second national crown with a future Pro Football Hall of Famer leading the way. Success didn't end with the move to Division I. There have been conference crowns, two players in New York vying for the Heisman Trophy at the Downtown Athletic Club, and bowl victories, including the miracle in Mobile against none other than East Carolina. Leftwich takes the snap. Here comes the blitz. Byron steps up. He guns for the end zone. Touchdown! for a touchdown by Josh Davis. And the flying herd has the win. Pruitt's successful run was followed by former herd great Mark Snyder doing a five-season stint. Then, in December of 2009, Doc Holliday was hired. He's enjoyed an abundance of victories and has now coached in more games than any other herd football leader in the history of the program. Along the way, he's developed wonderful friendships with the likes of Red Dawson. Lo loves the outdoors like I do. And it's little wonder we don't get along. I mean, we get along real good. And things are going real good in 2020 for Thundering Herd football with a national ranking once again. It is hard to believe 50 years have passed. The pain will forever linger, but there are comforting moments to help ease the hurt. And one thing I've always said is that I believe if my dad had to die, this, this was probably the way he would want to go with uh, he was all Marshall. Rick Tolley and his crew were building. Others were left to continue and continue they did. You know, for that young Thundering Herd to take the field and win two games the way they won them and it, to give us hope, nothing's more important in life than hope. And the young Thundering Herd gave us hope and look what happened. The Lord knows right. And for some reason, He caused it to change, I think. 
I, you know, I can't prove it, but that's the way I'm looking at it. And from the heavens above, the 75 are looking down, day and night, beaming with pride. A Marshall Memorial, remembering the 75, presented by Yes Ford, has been sponsored in part by Elko Mechanical Contractors, Go Mart, the West Virginia Lottery, Mountain Health Network, and by Yes Ford. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.